ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير اول بلا ابتداء اخر بلا انتهاء امره بين الكاف والنون اذا اراد شيئا ان يقول له كن فيكون واشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح الامه وكشف الله به الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى اتاه اليقين فصلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى اله وصحبه ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ونعوذ بالله تعالى من النار ثم اما بعد one day Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu an, the noble companion, Mu'adh ibn Jabal, was uh, with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam in a, a meeting that was only between him and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And so he decided to seize the opportunity because these opportunities do not come often at all. This is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, a prophet and a messenger, a father, a husband, leader of a state, army commander, judge, and the list goes on of all the titles and roles that Rasulullah used to play. And so Mu'adh ibn Jabal is with the Rasulullah and he knows this opportunity is not going to come again or it might not come again. So he has to take advantage of this opportunity and extract what he can from Rasulullah And so he asked Rasulullah O oh, Rasulullah, أَخْبِرْنِي بِعَمِلٍ يُدْخِرُنِي الْجَنَّةِ وَيُبَاعِدُنِي مِنَ النَّارِ O oh, Rasulullah sallallahu inform me of an action that will enter me into paradise and will take me away from the hellfire. So right away we see that Mu'adh ibn Jabal is an intelligent person and he asks the jack jackpot question, the million dollar question. He knows that this opportunity is limited. So he goes right away for the most important question which is, how can I enter paradise? And how can I save myself from the hellfire? And so Rasulullah says to him, لَقَدَ سَأَلْتَ عَنْ عَظِيمٍ You've asked about something very great, not, not a simple matter. وَإِنَّهُ لَا يَسِيرٌ عَلَى مَنْ يَسَّرَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ But it is easy for whoever Allah makes it easy for. And so Rasulullah proceeds to answer him in his question. And Mu'adh asks the question, give me a, 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 an action, one action, something I can do that will enter me into paradise and will take me away from the hellfire. He asked for one thing. And Rasulullah proceeded to give him the answer by giving him a list of things you have to do. Showing that there's no easy way to enter paradise. There's no cheat code to enter paradise. You have to perform a number of steps. It's not one thing that you do and you enter paradise and you're saved from the hellfire. So Rasulullah proceeds to give him a number of things that you need to do in order to attain this uh, entry into paradise and being safe in the hellfire. So he mentions the pillars of, of Iman, believing in Allah, avoiding shirk, the most important uh, acts of worship, obligatory acts of worship, the salah, the zakat, the, the fasting, the hajj. He mentions some of the most important voluntary acts of worship, sadaqah, qiyamul layl. And then after all of this, after he has mentioned all of this, he asks Mu'adh ibn Jabal a question. He says, Should I not inform you of the foundation of everything that I just mentioned? Everything that I just mentioned? Shall I not inform you of the foundation of all of that? And so Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu an, he says, of course, bala ya Rasulullah. Of course, inform me of, of the foundation of everything that has preceded. And so Rasulullah sallallahu he pointed to his tongue and he said, Kufa alayka hadha. Restrain this. Restrain the tongue. And Mu'adh bin Jabal, it seems as though this is the first time he is hearing this or learning this. He did not know that the tongue had such a high status in our deeds. He was surprised to hear this, as if this is the first time he learned this. And so 
he asks Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Nabi Allah, wa inna la mu'akhaduna bima natakallamu bi? Are we going to be accountable for what we say? This is news to him. This is something he didn't know before. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam answered him, and he was also surprised. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was also ex- surprised. How that Mu'ad doesn't know this? How did you not know that we are accountable for what we say? So Rasulullah Sallam says to him, "Fakilatka umuka ya Mu'ad, wa hal yakub al nas ala wujuhihim, aw qala ala manakhidihim illa hasaidu al sinatihim." So Rasulullah Sallam says that may your mother lose you, and this is a statement that they used to say uh, to express astonishment and surprise, and it's not meant to be taken literally. So he said, "May uh, may your mother lose you." To express astonishment and surprise, will people not be dragged on their faces or on their noses except what is from the harvest of their tongues? And so Rasulullah informs Mu'adh that, yes, not only are we held account for what we say, but this very tongue is going to be the cause of many people being dragged on their faces or on their noses into the fire. And we seek Allah's refuge from that. It might surprise us that Mu'adh ibn Jabal did not know this. This is something that we all know, right? When we grow up, we all know that our words have consequences in this life and the next. We all know this. We grow up learning this. So it might surprise us that somebody like Mu'adh ibn Jabal was ignorant of this. And we might be even more surprised when we learn who Mu'adh ibn Jabal is. Because Mu'adh ibn Jabal is not just any of the normal Sahaba. Not all of the Sahaba were of the same level. You have some Sahaba who are very simple people, farmers, traders, businessmen. And they were not very knowledgeable. They were very simple. They did what they were told and they went along their life. And then you have some Sahaba who were scholars from the ulama. And Mu'adh ibn Jabal was one of them. To the point where Rasulullah says about Mu'adh ibn Jabal, وَأَعْلَمُهُمْ بِالْحَلَالِ وَالْحَرَامِ Mu'adh ibn Jabal. The most knowledgeable of them amongst all of the Sahaba. He didn't say Abu Bakr or Umar. Uthman or Ali or any other of the well-known Sahaba. He said the most knowledgeable of them, of the halal and the haram, is Mu'adh ibn Jabal. So he was a scholar from the scholars of the Sahaba. But he did not know that the tongue has such a high place in our actions, in our deeds. And there's no shame in this. There's no shame to at one point be ignorant of something. But what is shameful and what is blameworthy is if you continue to be ignorant when you have the opportunity to learn. This is what is blameworthy. But there is no blame and there is no shame in being ignorant at one point of something because none of us was born with knowledge. As Allah says in the Quran, Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shay'an. Allah brought you out from the wombs of your mothers. You didn't know anything. And Allah says, Alladhi allama bil khalam. The one who taught by the pen, he taught man which he, what, that which he did not know. And as the uh, lines of poetry go, Learn, because a person is not born with knowledge. They're not born knowing. And the person of knowledge is not like the ignorant. The person of knowledge is not like the ignorant. So there's no shame in at one point being ignorant of certain things, but there is shame if you have the opportunity to learn and you do not learn. So Mu'adh ibn Jabal, after this, he becomes one of the most knowledgeable of the companions. In fact, the most knowledgeable of halal and haram. But at one point, he was ignorant and he did not know like all of us. And this is a good and beautiful lesson for all of us that we have to do our best to learn whatever we are able to and not use any excuses to avoid learning what we are obligated to know. The tongue has a lot of dangers but it is also one of the greatest blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided with, us with. As Allah says, أَلَمْ نَجْعَلْ لَهُ عَيْنَيْنِ وَلِسَانًا وَشَفَتَيْنِ وَهَدَيْنَاهُ النَّجْدَيْنِ Did we not give him two eyes, mankind? And did we not give him uh, the lips and the tongue and did we not show him the two ways right and wrong so the tongue is a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but it is also something very dangerous if you do not control it and it is just one statement that can 
throw you into the depths of the fire, or it can raise you up levels in paradise. As Rasulullah says in the hadith, Inna al abda la yatakallamu bil kalima min ridwani la la yulqi biha balan yarfa'u biha darajat. That a person will say a word or a statement, and he doesn't think much of this statement, but it is something good. And because of this, he raises in ranks. وَإِنَّ الْعَبْدَ لَا يَتَكَلَّمُ بِالْكَلِمَةِ مِنْ سَخْطِ اللَّهِ لَا يُلْقِي بِهَا بَالًا يَهْوِي بِهَا فِي جَهَنَّمِ And a person will say a statement that is angers, that angers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he doesn't pay attention to it. He doesn't think much about it. And it will take him to the depths of the fire. So the, the tongue is something that has the potential to ruin our akhirah. As it goes, uh, saying in Arabic, إِنَّهُ صَغْرَ جِرْمُهُ وَعَظُمَ جُرْمَهُ That it is small in its size, but it is big in its sins. And as another proverb in Arabic goes, they say, لِسَانُكَ أَسُدُكَ إِنْ أَثْلَقْتَهُ فَرَسَكْ وَإِنْ أَمْسَكْتَهُ حَرَسَكْ That your tongue is your lion. If you control it, or if you let it go, you let it roam free, and you do not control it, then it's going to hunt you and eat you and devour you. But if you control it and you take care of it, then it will guard you and it will protect you. And because of the importance of the tongue, Rasulullah has a guarantee. And the guarantee of Rasulullah, of course, is true. He is Sadiqul Masluq, he is the most truthful of people. He says, Man kana, man yadmanu li ma bayna lihyayhi wa rijlayhi, wa rijlayhi admanu lahu al jannah. Whoever can guarantee for me what is between the, the, the jaw bones and what is between the legs, meaning the private parts, then I guarantee for that person paradise. I guarantee for that person paradise. And so the tongue, it's something that we have to be very careful, extremely careful of. And we have two, two golden rules. If you apply these rules, then you'll save yourself a lot of danger, potential danger in this life and the next when it comes to the tongue. The first rule is saying only which is good, what is good. If you have something good, say it. Other than that, restrict yourself, restrain yourself from speaking. And this is based on the hadith of Rasulullah Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir fal yakul khayran aw li yasmud. Whoever believes in Allah in the last day, then let him say good or let him be quiet. And the second rule is do not speak unless you have a need and reason to speak. Do not speak unless you have a need and reason to speak. If you can observe these two things, and these things are a lot easier said than done, but if you can observe these two things, then you will protect yourself from a lot of danger that you will expose yourself from the tongue in this life and in the next. It has been said that about the tongue, لا شيء أحق بالسجني من اللسان There's nothing that is more, in, uh, more, more right to be imprisoned than the tongue. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed the tongue where? He has placed it behind the lips and behind the teeth. That is imprisoned in the mouth. But despite that, this tongue, it breaks the locks and it opens the doors and it tries to get out. But Allah has made it in such a way that it is behind the teeth, behind the lips, but it forces its way out. So we have to be careful with the tongue. And there are many, many statements about the importance of restraining the tongue and being silent and not opening your mouth unless you have something good to say or there is a need. As they say in the, the popular saying, silence is golden. They also say silence is a true friend who never betrays. It's always good to be silent if you have nothing good to say or if you have no need to say it. And when you are silent, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not call us into account, even if in our hearts is something that displeases him. As it comes in the hadith, إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَجَاوَزَ لِي عَنْ أُمَّتِي مَا وَسْوَتَتْ بِهِ سُدُورُهَا مَا لَمْ تَعْمَلْ أَوْ تَتَكَلَّمْ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven for my ummah what their hearts whisper to them, as long as they avoid two things, as long as they avoid acting on it, and as, avoid, as long as they avoid speaking about it. So as long as you keep it inside of you, then you are not held into account, despite whatever is in your heart, which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But of course, you try to fight that, and you don't let it uh, build up inside of you. And so the, the best policy is always to be silent, 
unless you have something good to say or there is a need for you to speak. And the Arabs say, Man kathura kalamuhu, kathura saqtuhu. Whoever speaks a lot, then they tend to slip up a lot. They make mistakes and they say things that they shouldn't be saying. Woman kathura saqtuhu, kathura dhunubuhu. And whoever slips up a lot, they will end up sinning a lot. That will lead to them making mistakes and then the mistakes end up leading to them sinning and disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for this reason, it's very important that we control the tongue, we pay attention to what we say, and we do not let the tongue run free. A statement from a proverb from some of the wise men, they said, Three things that it hardens the heart. Three things that harden the heart. A person laughs, and there's no reason to laugh. Laughing uncontrollably for no reason. You ask the person, why are you laughing? They don't know. This is one of the things that hardens the heart. And a person eating without being hungry. You're eating, but you're not hungry. Why are you eating? And speaking without any need. These three things harden the heart. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our tongues and make our tongues witnesses for us on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, not against us. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ومولانا محمد أما بعد There are many uh, diseases of the tongue many things that we need to be careful with when it comes to the tongue and a lot of these we know already statements of kufr lying backbiting slandering tailbearing and the list goes on there are many things that are uh, dangerous to our salvation in the next life because of the tongue. And we'll mention, inshallah, a few of these things that are diseases of the tongue, a few things that are not as common. We all know the, the things that we should avoid, lying, backbiting, slandering, and these things. But there are a few things that we might not be as aware of or not be paying attention to that we can fall, un we can fall into if we are not careful. The first is extra speech. And we mentioned in the first khutbah, the harms of speaking without need or speaking when you don't have anything good to say. Whoever believes in Allah and the last day, let him speak what is good or be silent. Second thing is arguing, even if you are right. We all know that arguing when you're wrong, everybody can agree that this is something blameworthy. But there's some people who think because I'm right, I am right, I, I have the, 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 the truth is with me, that means that it's okay for me to argue. But Rasulullah advises otherwise. He says, That I guarantee a house in the outskirts of paradise for the person who gives up arguing even if they are right even if they are right. The third is inappropriate and lewd speech. And this is something that we see and hear on a daily basis. Reading newspapers, listening to even the news, TV shows, movies, it's surrounding us on the tongues of people. You, sometimes their people are saying things, statements, they don't even know what it means. And it is a foul and inappropriate meaning. And this is something that has prevailed amongst the people. And Rasulullah never was a lewd or inappropriate person when it comes to speech. As his wife Aisha radiallahu anha says, لم يكن Rasulullah فاحشا ولا متفاحشا That he was not a person of inappropriate speech. And he was not a person who entertained inappropriate speech. Another thing to avoid when it comes to the tongue is lying even when you're joking. So we all know that you, lying in general is prohibited. But some people think that I'm telling a joke. It's only a joke. It has no reality to it or it's not going to harm anybody. So it's okay to lie if you're joking. And Rasulullah advises otherwise. He also guarantees a house will be baitin fi wasatil jannah 
لمن ترك الكذب ولو كان مزاحا that Rasulullah uh, uh, guarantees a house in paradise for the one who avoids, avoids lying even if they are joking this is the common thing we hear at the end somebody tells a lie and what do they say at the end I was only joking it was only a joke Rasulullah guarantees a, paradise, a house in paradise if you avoid these type of jokes because they don't lead to any good and they can only give harm also from the things that we should be avoiding is spilling secrets spilling secrets somebody tells you something in confidence and you go and you tell somebody else and a secret is only between two people once a secret goes to somebody else the third person it is no longer a secret and if you were unable to restrain your person then definitely that third person is also unable to restrain themselves from telling the fourth person and the fifth person until it becomes public knowledge so spilling secrets when something has been said in confidence is also something that is uh, extremely dangerous and harmful for relationships between people and, uh, and other things. And it is a form of treachery, which Rasulullah warns us about and says that this is one of the signs of none other than the munafiq, the hypocrite. Thalathun, thalathun, ayatul munafiq, thalathun. That the sign of the hypocrite is thalath, idha hadatha kadab. When he speaks, he lies. When he makes a promise, he breaks that promise. And when he's entrusted with something, he breaks that trust. So this is a form of breaking the trust. When you are entrusted in confidence of some information and you give it out to somebody else, this is breaking a trust. And this is a sign of the hypocrites. Also from the things that we need to avoid from the diseases of the tongue is criticizing food. We live in an age where we have all types of food available. Restaurants of all different, especially in New York City, Queens, New York, we have all the different types of dishes from all the different countries. At our disposal, we can go to any restaurant you want. If you want Chinese food today, you can go to get Chinese food. If you want, uh, if you want Arab food, you can go get Arab food. You can get any type of dish you want. And what tends to happen, this, the food is not up to our standard. What happens? We start to criticize the food and talk about it. And this is something that is blameworthy. Rasulullah Rasulullah never criticized food. If he liked it, he ate it. And if he did not like it, then he left it. And he did not criticize food. Also from the things that we should avoid when it comes to the tongue is denouncing things like the wind. Sometimes we have events planned or we have uh, occasions and a storm comes the wind comes and it ruins those plans and people tend to get upset and they start to talk about and bad talk the wind and denounce the wind and the rain and all these things are controlled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these things are not doing these they're, they're anything on their own they are only obeying the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Rasulullah says in the hadith لا تسب الريح do not denounce the wind if it comes and you, don't, you see something that you do not like, then you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for protection of what it brings and what is in it and what it's been sent with. And if there is good in it, then ask Allah's blessings from it and what is in it. But do not denounce and curse the wind. Also from the things that we should avoid is saying what if. What if. This is a very common uh, statement that comes in our tongues of things uh, that has happened in the past. Something goes wrong. Something didn't go according to plan. Something did not happen as we expected it. And we say, what if, if only this had happened, if only we had done that. This is something that Rasulullah says to avoid. If something uh, happens, if a uh, calamity happens, do not say, if I had done this, then this would have happened. Because this is the door of shaitan. Instead say, that is the decree of Allah, and Allah does whatever He wills. Because law, saying if, what if, this opens the door for the shaitan. And lastly, something to avoid, very important, when it comes also to calamities, is expressing any type of displeasure at the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Things happen, calamities occur, people, uh, loved ones passed away, 
businesses fail, and other types of things happen that we are not pleased with. But we should avoid saying anything that expresses any displeasure in Allah's decree. So sometimes people might say, I can't believe this happened, or why did this happen, or this should not have happened. All these statements need to be avoided. They express displeasure at Allah's decree. When Rasulullah's son Ibrahim passed away, and his son was a baby, and his son passed away, and his eyes were tearing, and he said, Inna al-ayna latadma, that the eyes, it tears up. Wa inna al-qalba la yahzan, and the heart feels sadness. But he said, Wala naqulu illa ma yurdi rabbana, but we will not say, except what pleases our Lord. Wa inna bi firatika, ya Ibrahim la mahzunu, and we are at your passing, we are sad, O Ibrahim, but we will not say anything that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our tongues, make our tongues pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and make it witnesses for us on the day of judgment, not against us. Inna Allah wa malaikata wa yusalluna ala nabi, ya ayu alladhina aminu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fil akhirati hasana, wa qina adhab al-nar. Rabbana fi'gfir lana dhulubina, wa kafir anna sayyatina, wa tawafana ma'al abrar. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, give relief and aid to all of those Muslims, our brother, Muslim brothers and sisters who are suffering in Libya and Morocco and all places in the world. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give them immediate and uh, full relief and to protect us all. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i dil qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkar ya'idukum la'allakum tadhakkaroon udhkuru Allah yadhkurkum wa du'uhu yastajib lakum wa la dhikru Allahi akbar wa Allahu ya'lamu ma tasna'oon qimu salam.